Do you ever look in the mirror and get surprised by what you see? Uglier or prettier, thicker or thinner, or just plain different? Every day I look in the mirror and lift up my shirt. Is my stomach big today or small? How can I judge myself today for something as silly as appearance? For something as small as the bulge of my stomach, the width of my arms, the skin below my chin. To give you a fictitious and fleeting boost of confidence, to confirm or deny what you have always thought inside, to tell you what you're worth today. No, maybe it's worthy of a shift to look and see. Beauty, created meticulously, intentionally, specifically, made as you. Dahlia does poetry. Today I'm in my bathroom to show you my mirror, or rather how we can transform this mirror. We have all seen this kind of mirror. Many of us have had one in our homes and there is nothing specifically wrong with it. In fact, it is large, no cracks, it works. But just because there's nothing wrong with it doesn't mean I won't make it better. So about this mirror, it's very flat and it's held up by these mirror clips. That's all there is to know really. And my plan is to frame it make it more of a statement like it's meant to be here. Now to make a frame, we need trim. And for trim, we go to the hardware store. <laughs> Waiting for Perth because... Hi. Rain. So I'm back. And what did I get? Trim, obviously. This stuff. What's cool about it is that it has a protruding edge that should cover those plastic mirror clips perfectly. This was the only trim that I liked and could see working, and it did come in MDF and wood. But I got wood because I like the look of real wood. So to make the frame, I'm going to be using this handsaw and miter box set. Oh, sorry, is this distracting? Anyway, this tool set is way slower and harder to use than an electric miter saw, which I do own. However, it does make good cuts and makes way less mess. And I don't want dust everywhere. So yeah, that's what I'm going to use. Also, it's like a $20 tool, more accessible for everyone. Okay, so to frame the mirror, we're going to do 45 degree mitered edges. So I'm measuring well, let me take you and I'll show you. So I'm just like lining it up. When you line this up on the edge, it fully covers that mirror clip, which is just a godsend that I found this. So I have got two of the pieces fully cut, both ends, and I'm working on the last two. This is my workout for the day because this is surprisingly still a lot. <laughs> you know, with an electric saw, the saw blade is the saw blade and you use electricity to run it, you are the electricity, you know? You're, you're doing the thing, so. So here are my four pieces of the frame. I'm gonna put a little cardboard under each of these. I'm basically just gonna put some wood glue down. This is LePage wood glue. I also have these corner clamp things. So I'm going to give you the rundown of different ways you could attach this. You could put wood glue and then staple across the two sections or use a nail gun from the side. If you don't have either of those and you don't have clamps, you could use an instant set glue like instant bond or use wood glue, but work one corner at a time, waiting until it dries before working on the next corner. In every option though, use more glue than what I applied. You'll see why soon enough. Moment of truth of whether this is all staying together. Looks like it worked. I'm gonna do a little dry fit. 
I just kind of balanced it on the clips, like it's not perfect, but look at it. It's looking good. So back into the Forsaken office I go. I am not leaving this frame unfinished without color, but before applying stain, I need to do some touch-ups. So I was really annoyed because I noticed in some of the corners there were a little bit of gaps. So I wanted to like file down the edges and put some wood glue in it. And I couldn't find my sandpaper. So instead of like getting aggravated, <laughs> um, I instead was like, okay, I have a nail file. I can use that. And it worked. I am now ready to stain and I'm going to use this charred wood accelerator, which I've used a couple times before, including on my coffee table. I mean, it's fine. It's gonna turn it black, which is what I wanted. I also do have wood paint that is black, but I figured this might be better because then you'll be able to see a little bit of the wood grain still, which will give a more elevated look. Got my trusty, dusty respirator. I'm a little nervous just because I didn't really remove anything around me to make this a tidier experience. And this wood stain is a little bit not a little bit, it's like a lot liquid, and I was expecting it for some reason to not be so liquid. <laughs> okay, so I just finished staining and everything. Let me show you a little bit of what happened. So remember how I said there was one corner that like, had a little bit more of a gap and so I thought I kind of fixed it before I started staining. Well, I didn't fix it and it broke while I was staining. Fully separated, so I put a lot more glue and I just clamped it to the table. So this is kind of the setup that I have here and that's that. And as you can see, I've made an absolute disaster of this table and I needed to do like four super saturated coats, the black stain, and I think it is looking really good. Just a look at the perfect wood texture that's going on here you still see the grain really really well that's exactly what i wanted and now i need a break one of the good things about this turned wood product despite it not being very opaque is uh it doesn't really have a lot of smell so that is good also this is the reality of what's going on in here right now it's a disaster so the limited workspace and everything was not the most fun that's okay moving on the next day so let's take a look at whether the clamping situation fixed that corner i think it should have look at that it's perfect it's definitely a very secure attachment now so we're good so to top coat the frame basically for the sole purpose of being able to wipe down dust easily because my place gets quite dusty um, i'm just going to use this polycrylic in matte Use whatever you have really in the type of finish that you want. I want it to be matte because I think it'll look the best. I'm back and I'm ready to sand. I started here and you just like scuff it up a little bit very lightly. Okay, so here's the thing, it's done. But I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to hang this. There's two options in my mind. One is to use command strips and the other is to use these interlocking clips. Okay, look, I can't actually decide how I'm going to hang this yet and let me show you why. I am planning to do a DIY backsplash in here and, oh right, that's the magic of video, here we go. 
I actually just finished my backsplash, which I show in another video. All my projects are renter friendly and removable, so if you're interested, check it out. Anyway, now I've decided on how to hang my mirror frame. I left some little spots here on the edges so that I could stick it up with command strips. But of course you could use a little bracket that are interlocking or you could use picture frame hooks. I'm not sure what to say here, so I guess I'll just say that I've had this idea since the day I moved in about 900 days ago, and I finally did it, and I did a good job, so yay me. But as usual, there had to be a touch of stress. It's going to be a one-shot wonder, yo. It's a one-shot wonder. No stress. Which really stresses me out. Okay, so I'm going to stick... I just said no stress. You think I should hold it sideways? No. What am I doing here? Just do not put your side down. You see, life is kind of like this mirror frame. It's big and stained with color. It's perfectly fit, yet a bit lopsided. It's together and strong, yet a bit fragile. Better because it's here, more beautiful than without it. And so of course, I'm glad I've made this. And by the way, I have many other bathroom DIY projects you'd probably like to see. So go see them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.